Today's episode of The Sit Down with Scott Dion Brown is brought to you by Jeanette McKenzie, Realtor at Forest Hill Signature, Jewelry Forever at JewelryForever.ca, and Beautified by Romina. Enjoy the show. Broadcasting live from Glenmore Record Studios in Toronto, this is The Sit Down with Scott Dion Brown, your Sunday morning talk show with interesting guests, live musical performances, and the most fun you can fit in your coffee cup. Hosted by Scott Dion Brown and Regina Elena, this, this is, is The Sit Down with Scott Dion, Dion Brown. Regine, you know what that is? No, I have no idea. That's the uh, that's the polar vortex freezing us. Mm. It's been cold. It has been. It's like minus. It's like it, actually yesterday was like minus nine. But felt like. But felt like minus. Whatever. Eight million. It's cold. You know what it is? It's the wind. Yeah, that's always the wind. Yeah. yeah. Like it could be like minus five. But then it feels like minus 30 because of the wind. The worst is when you'll like, you'll step outside. No, no. You look outside before you go outside. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, it's so nice and sunny out. Wow, it's nice. And then you, may, you might even step outside for a minute and you're walking and you're like, oh, this is fine. And then, yeah, suddenly then the gust Ooh. of wind will blow. You're like, oh, God. No, what's oh. worse is we haven't had sun for all of January. And then the sun finally comes out and it's freezing. Polar vortex. Ha ha. Freezing. Nice try. It's Elsa. It's this woman right here. <laughs> it's Elsa. her fault. <laughs> Hi, everybody, and welcome to episode 210. Wow. 210. 210. Look at us. Of the sit down with Scott Dion Brown, I am your host, the one, the only Scott Dion Brown. And I'm joined on this polar vortex. <laughs> By the one, the only Regina Lena. Happy Sunday, everyone. It might be cold outside, but we're nice and toasty inside. So I'm not complaining. That's true. You know what? Here we are. It's a beautiful Sunday morning because you know what? It's sit down time. It is. But I feel like I literally just saw you. So it's fine. Yeah. So yesterday, Regine and I Mm -hmm. had a photo shoot day. Yeah, so if you follow us on Twitter or Instagram, I mean, not Twitter, TikTok or Instagram, I'm sure you've seen our behind the scenes. That's right. It was pretty fun. It was. Makeup, as always, by the incredible official makeup artist of the show, beautified by Romina. Yeah. Made uh, made me look presentable. Just a little. Just a little. She fixed your eyebrows. She did. <laughs> She's like, do you want me to fix that? I'm like, I didn't. No, they need it. <laughs> My mom loves eyebrows, so you're welcome. Yeah, she had like a little blade and she was like, Let me just fix this. Yeah. And I was like, Ah, look at that. So, yeah. We now were, they're fixed. Now they're fixed, finally. <laughs> Maybe one of you guys could have pointed that out. Thanks for nothing. But anyway, Thanks now they're fixed. Thanks, Beautified by Rovina. Thanks, Beautified by Rovina. Yeah, so now they're fixed, looking great. We got some brand new photos. We did several looks, different outfits. I know the whole the whole nine. So watch for those new thumbnail, new logos. It's new all sit we're, down. It's kind of just a new brand. Actually, though, the logo is remaining the same because I actually like this logo. Yeah. But but the imagery that goes with it will be. We've aged a little since. Um, <laughs> I haven't. I have. I, if anything, I look. I'm, I've gotten younger, Regina. You actually do. You look younger from those photos versus. It's the haircuts. It's there's no shampoo. I'm like, I'm like Benjamin Button. Oh, jeez, Louise. But anyways, speaking of... <laughs> speaking of Benjamin Button. I don't know. Everybody, our guest today. Well, there's a show coming up. All right. Mm-hmm. February 11th. Mm-hmm. The uh, Love Me, Love Me Not Valentine musical. Oh. It's kind of exciting. It's an original script written by playwright Mika C., she wrote this story, and uh, it features music from like popular songs. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't know what you call. Is that a, is that a cabaret? Is that what you call a cabaret? He doesn't want to speak until he's introduced. He's not introduced. <laughs> then we probably introduce him anyway. Our guest. <laughs> the reason I'm talking about this show, "Love Me, Love Me Not," a Valentine musical, is because one of the cast members from that show 
mm-hmm. is here today. We're we're oh very we're very very uh, uh, blessed to have him here. Yes. Everybody, please. And he's also been on the show before. He has, but this is his first, first time, time in, in person, person. Which uh, is way better. So, mm-hmm. uh, everybody, please welcome to the sit down the one, the only, Jarius Monzon. Hello. Oh. Hi. Hi. Welcome to our in person studio. I'm really excited because. Um, spoiler, Jarius is performing live oh, for yeah. all of you today, and we haven't had a live performance since since my you. <laughs> since my band performed, right? Yeah. That was what show was that was a special episode. That was that what was, was our two hundredth episode. Oh yeah. So episode two hundred. So ten weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I mean yeah, that was our live performance, but like it's because my band doesn't really Yeah, count. it's just you. So we haven't had a guest, <laughs> like an actual guest on to perform live, so but um, no pressure. Jerry. I know Jerry's here. So, <laughs> so how are you feeling today? Because I know you had a performance last night, right? Yeah, it was pretty fun. I think my favorite part about it was just meeting all the people there. Like everyone there was just so talented. Nice. What was the name of the event? It was uh, uh, Peyton and Kaylee. Uh, I think it was a fundraiser for. Uh, they're basically going to take all the money they raised and go to the Philippines and perform at different places. Oh, cool. That's and, so fun. They're very talented. It's crazy oh, yeah. to, they, they, to think that they both started a JDL, so yeah. Josie de Leon School of Performing Arts, and then they were both in the Mini Pop Kids, and to now see what they're both doing. I mean, we've had them both on the show virtually. Never been in person, right? Never. We, we, person. we should get Peyton in here at some point. We should. And, but and we have Jarius. We have Jarius here today. Here today. Um, how was last night? How did it go? Um... Honestly, at first I was really nervous because I wasn't really comfortable with where I was singing in terms mm. of like my oh, range. Because yeah. I'm usually like, as you can hear now, I'm a lower voice type of person. No. But <laughs> <laughs> but over there I had to sing in the ranges of like tenor, which huh. are you alto? Which was, um, I'm a ba- I'm a bass too at school. Bass. <laughs> Is that a base? So how did that feel to be pushing you uh, pushing your out of your range? It like was that? actually kind of interesting because I never knew I could hit those kind of notes so comfortably. Mm-hmm. Like I switched a lot in falsetto and chest voice. So there's a lot of mixed voice when we were singing. Yeah. But on top of that, I was dancing a lot, which oh. out of everyone there, I'm not a dancer. But I discovered <laughs> I actually kind of enjoy it. Fine. So it was a fun experience. That's cool. Yeah, that's tough when you have to sing out of your out of your... But yeah, I guess you well you learn so you learn something about your about your voice. Yeah. About your so I think what I'm gonna start doing is being more versatile with the genres I sing. I mm. kind of want to move out of jazz, although <gasps> I love it so much. Mm-hmm. Oh I my think God. I want to start singing more upbeat, energetic songs as well, more modern things. Oh, huh, mm. how exciting! Because that actually is something I did want to ask you about. Um, we might have talked about it before, but I, it was so, I it's can't been remember so anymore. long. Yeah. So I honestly don't even remember at all what we talked about last time. So it's fine. Do you remember what we talked about last time? I don't um, remember what we talked about. Not really. He got his Good. handle from us, from our show. Oh. His IG handle. So it's Jerry's Jam because of the show? Ask him. Yeah, because basically what happened for our last show <laughs> Remind was Scott, you this asked old us man. <laughs> what, our, um, what my Instagram was. And at the time, it didn't have really like a cl- catchy name. It was really long. Oh. So you said... Uh, just what's your initials? And I went Jam, like Jarius Alexander Monzon. And he went just Jarius Jam, and I was like, you know what? That sticks. So you can find me at Jarius Jam on Instagram. I came up with that. Yeah. Oh my God, Scott, you need to you need to take your vitamins so you have better memory. <laughs> You're right. I, that's that's the problem. I wow, that's so cool. But it works because Jarius does jam too. Different yes, types. Yes, that, that's what I. You know, yeah. that's why I think I, when I saw it, it just seems so natural. It, it works. Alliteration, JJ. But I didn't realize that I actually like, wow, I'm honored that you use it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> cool. But anyway. Follow him on Jerry's Jam. But yeah, I did want to ask you about, because um, obviously the, the genre of music you've chosen to, that you do a lot of your singing in and that yeah. you'll be performing even today. Um, it's a very specific mm-hmm. um, music choice. Yeah. You know, it's. Uh, Not you know. everyone sings it like yeah i mean it's it's a very classic i mean you're thinking like frank sinatra you know the only buble michael buble yeah but like in terms of modern artists like he's one of the only maybe the only one that i'm aware of and jerry's well and and jerry's of course (laughs) so what what drew you initially to sing in that genre um well i was trained like when i was younger i realized my voice type did not fit a lot of the songs i wanted to sing like i wanted to sing a lot of pop r&b 
-hmm. but I just didn't have that vocal flexibility. And when I started going to mm -hmm. Cardinal Carter, I grew this classical music style, which I wanted to make not classical because mm -hmm. I don't really want to sing all those like opera things at mm -hmm. shows. Yeah. So the closest thing with, with that was jazz. Mm -hmm. And it kind of brings out my legato voice, my because I'm a really powerful voice type. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But very low, very, very powerful. Yeah. And uh, can I ask, because I'm always so curious, sorry. As a male singer, once you hit puberty and the voice just drops, how did you go from pre puberty to now? Because your voice has gotten a lot deeper since. <laughs> yeah, it was really scary because when I was younger, I used to sing things like Bruno Mars. Mm -hmm. And when I went through, um, like, it was a week of not being able to speak. Like, that's <gasps> how bad it got. Wow. And I think after that week, my mom called me on the phone because she was like, did you get home? Yeah, where like, are you? <laughs> I was, that was also the time where I started going home by myself. Mm -hmm. And she was like, did you get home? Are you okay? And I went, hello? And she was like, oh, sorry, wrong number. And she hung up on <laughs> who me. Is that, who is that man at my house? <laughs> That's not my husband. <laughs> but yeah, um, just going through puberty in general and having a lower voice type, kind of scary because mm -hmm. I had to change all the time, how I sing and just how I manage my voice and realize that I just can't sing like that anymore. Yeah, I was so curious because like, Justin Bieber, you're yeah. a, did you sing as a kid? Oh yeah, in fact, yeah. How did that? Um, actually, you? when it happened to me, I was we were doing the school production of. Oh Annie. yeah, I remember this. Annie, I think it was Annie Junior, but you know, you know Annie, you yeah. know, Little Orphan Annie. Um, <laughs> you and, know Annie. <laughs> and I was I, I auditioned and got the part of Rooster Hannigan, which is like the main, not the main bad guy, but like one of the bad guy henchmen, bad guys, mm -hmm. whatever. And I auditioned with my high voice. And then midway through the show, like not even the show, midway through rehearsals, my voice like dropped and I didn't understand. Like I, but it was a weird transition where it's like I, it didn't go low enough that I could sort of hit into the, sing into the lower register, but it, 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 it but I, I couldn't hit the high, high notes anymore. So I had to go down an octave, but I couldn't really do it. So it was kind of like this eh, thing in the middle, which lasted for a while. And I ended up, I went, I, they, they pushed me to understudy because I couldn't sing. I couldn't <laughs> sing a part. So, yeah, I think one of the scariest parts about puberty and just like having your voice change is definitely like, you don't know how to manage it. Mm. Like, I yeah. think when I first started my career, there are so many shows that I think are off YouTube now, thank God, <laughs> that I voice crack like on one of the high notes and it just like terrified me oh, as a kid. No. Yeah. Yeah, it was, um, I, I very distinctly remember. In fact, they made me place another role because of that. I, I had to perform something in the show. You're like, I was there. Yeah, I remember. I, but I remember like when I did it, I was like going for these notes that my voice just couldn't do anymore. Mm. And I remember thinking like I was so self-conscious. You're like, oh no, my and singing I, career is over. I even remember people hearing people giggle in the audience. Aww. And I was like, it scarred me. Yeah. It scarred me. So. so how did you, I guess... Um, what's the word? train your, your voice to your new one? Well, when I sing at school, I learn to blend with other people, right? Because mm. it's like a choir. Mm -hmm. yeah. So as I sing like the low notes, I listen to other people and I just kind of fit my voice to what they're doing and I match them. It's no. kind of like matching someone's energy in a conversation. Oh, so, makes sense. Yeah. In fact, I've got to think now, because your voice is quite low. You probably, I mean, I know you said you weren't able to sing the s songs that you necessarily wanted to, but I, I've got to think now you can probably sing songs that a lot of people, I would say maybe even most singers can't now. Yeah. Cause, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Because um, a lot of the songs I sing are really old school. Mm -hmm. Like I've been told I have an old soul from mm -hmm. a lot of like <laughs> older people. Mm -hmm. And I guess I honestly love that compliment because... My music taste is not what you usually see in a 17-year-old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Oh, my God. You're 17? Yeah. Wow. There you go. So do you think, um, in terms of being a singer, like, do you plan to uh, put out original stuff? And Hopefully in the future, new? yeah. Because I've been a bit busy with a lot of shows and on top yeah. of school. Because mm -hmm. I'm just trying to focus on that as well since it's my last year for grade 12. Wow. Mm -hmm. But... Eventually, during maybe this summer or this coming couple months, I'll have a lot of free time to work on my films and work mm -hmm. on music. Sweet. I think one day I might combine the two and make like a music video or something. Ooh, that makes a lot of sense. That'd be so fun. I'd just be so curious to see. I mean, I know you were talking earlier how you 
got to perform in a higher register. Uh, but I'd be, I'll be curious to see when you put out some original stuff, what it'll sound like when you're... Because, you know, so much pop today, especially now, is about all that... You know what It'll I mean? be like some jazzy pop. But, but <laughs> even, yeah. even if you keep the, the beat and the music more pop, it'll be so... You don't really hear a lot of like a lower powerful voice like that anymore so it'll be neat to see what you bring to it it'll be like yeah. michael buble he does jazzy pop yeah jazzy pop but were you saying i know you said you wanted to do more pop do you, do you think when you put out original stuff would you want it to have that jazz feel or do you want to I go i think i'd like be? to like kind of honor the legacy of jazz because mm. i know it's a dying genre mm. and it's one of my favorites so i kind of want to keep that kind of tradition going where did you learn about jazz music like was it mm. in the household um, I used to actually listen to it in my uh, grandpa's car, Aww. like a really long time ago. Sadly, he's passed away around last year. Oh, I'm sorry. But I absolutely loved. He'd always play uh, one of two things. He'd play reggae or Frank Sinatra, <laughs> and cool. it was like his favorite artist. But it was either us jamming in the front seats or like just closing your eyes listening to jazz. Aww. And I realized that that kind of was the only music that matched my voice because nowadays it's just like really high riffs and runs everywhere mm -hmm. uh -huh. and everyone's just trying to top each other with their flexibility mm -hmm. but i wasn't gifted with that so You're gifted with other i ways. just wanted yeah. to else, yeah. show off what i could do that's awesome i like that mm -hmm. that's really cool and uh i'm excited to see where it goes so uh i know you said you've been really busy with stuff you recently had to uh let go of uh, gaming. Yeah. So I've been doing a lot of things like photography, film, mm -hmm. shows, instruments, just because I want to start learning the bass again, mm -hmm. as well as gaming. But recently I got carpal tunnel. So oh. I had I knew I had to let go of one of those things. Literally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Literally. Yeah, I had, a, I had a drummer in my in my band. He's not playing with us anymore, but um, uh, he from drumming started to get carpal tunnel because carpal tunnel is developed by if you do some it's like the same repetitive yeah, motion over and over i again, was right? basically just using my wrists like every day over exhausting it and it kind mm. of just started freezing up and like hurting my forearms and yeah. stuff like but that but do you find you are gaming because it was a pandemic or just because you just wanted to like game? <laughs> i realized that gaming was like something that i could just go to for fun mm. but as like the years went on, I realized that if I stop, I could do a lot of the other things I could do or like put my time into my interests mm. to make them better. Because my goal is kind of to be a really good editor for university. Nice. So awesome. that I can come up with a team and like match, find different people that are good in their roles for mm -hmm. film. So I can make like a friend group that's just really good at what they can do. And we can make a good film for the Toronto Film Festival. Ooh, it's amazing. Monzon Media 2.0. <laughs> oh yeah, I like that. Yeah. So yeah, so that, that's interesting. Yeah, we talked a bit beforehand. So what makes you want specifically to be an editor in filmmaking? Mm. Um, I just think it's the funnest part of kind of talking with the director, envisioning mm -hmm. a story and making that story from just clips that don't seem special. Mm -hmm. And you kind of, as you're creating the story, you're envision <clears throat> envisioning it as the viewer, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think my favorite part about it is mixing my musical background within it. Because mm -hmm. when I make films, they're always on beat with the music. And I've been studying Ooh. about beats. So mm -hmm. it's when like the scenes kind of switch with the music. Mm. And it goes along with it. And it's just kind of my favorite part. Because when it comes together, I like get so excited. I stand up in my chair. <laughs> I'm on call with my friends. And I'm like, this is what it should be like. It's great. That's cool. cool. Actually, it's true. Music does make a big difference in a scene of a movie. Yeah. It could, it literally sets the mood. Yeah. Well, have you seen those? Have you seen ever seen those clips? People post them on different places where like they'll take a scene in a movie and they'll replace the music with something else and it yeah. completely changes the feel of the scene. Have you seen those? No. It's on TikTok? There's some on TikTok. Like they'll replace like, uh, well, sometimes they change the total thing where, uh, what's a big one? There's a moment, oh, what movie was it? Was it Star Wars? Where there, it was one scene where like the two guys are facing each other and they're about to like fight. Mm. And so they, they start to like take their robes off to get their weapons ready and stuff. But then somebody switched the music to like um, uh, the George Michael song, I'm Never Gonna Dance Again. Like, Doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> so it looks like the, it, it suddenly turns into like a love scene, like they're getting <laughs> disrobed. And it's like, yeah, that's a big, big change. Oh, but, yeah, ed but yeah, editing also, I mean, not just the music, but like, Jeff. Editing literally makes decides whether the movie is good or bad. Yeah, it's like 
it's the most important uh it's the most important one mm -hmm. are you a big film guy do you like films yeah i've kind of been a, like during covid especially i watched so many films mm -hmm. and kind of right after because covid was during my grade 11th year mm -hmm. so i'd be studying film and then getting home to watch films and it kind of just grew on me cool like i've loved them ever since i was a kid i used to watch them with my dad like mm -hmm. there was this one show called the flash mm -hmm. oh yeah and yeah. every week they'd come out with a new episode and i come downstairs with my dad and we just watch it yeah. but i realized that i try to predict like possible outcomes more than enjoy the movie oh. <laughs> which kind of spoils some movies for me <laughs> like when i'm with my friends recently i've been talking about like the cinematography of it so we'll be sitting watching a movie and then they'll look at me and be like why are you why are you looking so confused i'm like i'm not confused i'm just studying yeah <laughs> no we had a very similar discussion we had james nickel from uh cleveland sound lab on recently mm -hmm. and he's got the same problem you know because he's he's also into filmmaking and videography and stuff and so am i and like once you start to learn about the the technical stuff behind it you you start to watch films in a completely different way which uh yeah, so that's why when I'm watching a, something with my girlfriend, for example, I'll be making comments about something and she'll be like, why are you even looking for that? Or why are you <laughs> looking at that? That's not, you know, but I don't think it diminishes my enjoyment. I just think I enjoy them differently now. Yeah. Yeah, so. Wait until you go into school for it. <laughs> I'm super excited for that, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it's very cool. It's very, very cool. So when you go into, I guess, film editing mode, what are you going to do with your music career? Well, since editing is a really, like, you make your own hours type job, mm -hmm. and I will have time for it, I guess what I'll do is I'll, what I assume I'm going to be doing is, like, <laughs> performing in the day or performing in the night, and then whenever I have the free time, I'll mm. be editing. That's fair. You just switch the... Yeah. Yep. They're, uh, and they're related. I mean, that's the thing. The ability to edit, like, you'll be able to edit your own stuff if you create mm -hmm. music, like you said, music videos and things. Yeah. That's it's so awesome. exciting. It's very exciting. And um, speaking of yeah. performing, so yesterday you performed with Peyton and Kaylee, and then you had mentioned earlier the February 11th. Oh, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that performance? Yeah, so the we've been practicing for the Love Me, Love Me Not concert on February 11th, mm -hmm. and I'm playing one of the main roles of Jarius, which is just myself. <laughs> but honestly, that experience has been pretty fun. It's also, like, I've been dancing there, too. I never knew that I actually enjoy it that much because I'd always be like sweaty after practice because mm -hmm. of just how my body isn't used to it. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, everyone there is like active or young. Mm -hmm. So like, I also find young. it weird how I'm the oldest <laughs> like, one there. On. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's been really fun learning mm -hmm. all these songs, especially the old ones. Like sometimes I see the kids and they're like, what song is this? But I know them. Oh, that's so awkward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like what? what's one song that you can... Like breaking up is hard to do. It's like pretty old. Yeah, that's. It's not that. Is that bring up? Is that from the is that from the fifties? I think so. And breaking the kids don't know do. these songs. Well, how, how how? I don't know. Maybe like like Jerry's. Maybe their grandparents yeah. would play the. Music. Well, like the only reason I even know those songs is because when I was a kid, my parents had that station on. Mm. But like that was oldie. Like breaking up is hard to do was an oldie. I mean, if you grow up in a Filipino household, it's very common for karaoke. <laughs> yeah, okay. that's, that's why I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. In fact, that's one thing that's kind of cool about the show coming up is that the, there's there's a lot of modern music in it, but there are also songs, well, yeah, that run all the way back. So. Yeah, I also discovered that I have somewhat of an acting ability, but mm. that people complimented me on it. But I was just being myself. I was just like being a little over eccentric mm. and. Like open. In fact, yeah, I did want to ask you about that because, uh, yeah, not only are you singing and, and, and performing in this, but you're also acting as well. Yeah. So is this, have you done much acting before? Was this kind of your first time? Um, No, actually. Like, this is one of my first times really acting in front of, like, a crowd of people. Wow. But, like, they were just like, here's your lines. Just be what the lines are. <laughs> I mean, you, it is Jerry. And they were giving, like, <laughs> characteristics to each person for their characters. Mm -hmm. Like, One's a hopeless romantic. One's like she gets over boys easily and falls in love really quickly. Mm. But for me, they just gave he's serious. But I mean, I was like, okay, they literally wrote it for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So have you found 
do you feel that your singing and performing performance experience is is helping carrying over with this or does it feel completely new to you or how does it feel it, it feels pretty like it's like i'm doing a show but it's elongated into like dialogue mm. it's kind of like what i've been doing in film mm. so makes sense i've been enjoying it do you have to so, memorize a script yeah how's that going that's like the hardest part yeah <laughs> i have a practice actually after this interview Mm -hmm. And we have to have some most of our lines memorized. Kind of nervous about it, but I think it'll go well. Aren't you going to be there too? <laughs> Dress rehearsal, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm also involved with the show. I'm doing the... Uh, the uh... You're the tech guy. Yeah, I guess that's a way to describe it. Tech guy. I, did the, I made the trailer and I'm doing the visuals and things. It should be pretty fun. It should be pretty fun. But uh, yeah, it's neat. It's very different from anything that, uh, that these guys have put on before. Because it's always been concerts and that sort of thing. And mm. this is... This is kind of a new, yeah, a new, a new thing. Fun. And, uh, is there a lot of people in the production? Um, I think there's a good amount. There's actually kids that I've met for the first time that are, I think they're slowly growing, like, mm -hmm. to get closer to me. <laughs> because I think at one practice, none of the, like, older people that run the talent agency, JDL, there were there to help them so they told me to and i was like i've never talked to these kids before <laughs> but like at first teaching them songs they were like who is he <laughs> but now i think they've like come to know who i am and nice. like they see what i can do so they kind of there's like that level of respect there because mm -hmm. i know they're performers too mm -hmm. and although they're young i know they're really good that's awesome that's interesting so they're actually you're actually teaching like how, mentoring how, them? how have you found uh teaching to be well, it's not really like I'm a teacher, but it's more of like like a role model or a mentor. You're a kuya. Yeah, I'm a kuya. <laughs> Aww. But I honestly, I'm really excited for the when they get older. Because mm. something I've always wanted to do is like vocally train people with technique when they're older. Because they'll listen mm. to me when they're older. Fair. I used to give workshops to younger kids that were like 8 to 13. Mm, not 13, like maybe 8 to 12. Mm -hmm. And sure they'd like follow the lesson but i knew it was just going right through one ear to the next 100 yeah. percent. yeah i i coach little kids as well i i get it it's, it's very different it's almost like it's like half teaching and half kind of just babysitting i find when you coach younger kids so i coach uh in pa the pageant world it's more so you need to realize that these kids like i coach from five and up so you have to like really see once their attention span is gone and then like switch it up right away yeah i was like let's learn a new song and they're like oh yeah so you can't just be like you can't you basically can't really run it the way you'd want to just mm -mm. okay so what we're gonna do is focus on this part of your performance so really think of you know what i mean you can't yeah. you're kind of there's a little bit of that but yeah it's it, there's an entire other uh side to it so you would much more much rather be like training people who are a little older who are actually like training to become vocalists yeah like they don't have to be like super old but they just have to comprehend what i can tell them and it's mm -hmm. overall just simple like fix your posture mm -hmm. or like position yeah. your vowels this way so that a better sound can come out so your resonance can pop more because mm -hmm. some of them although they're like what grade six grade seven mm -hmm. they have a lot of powerful voice mm -hmm. like when i was in grade nine I learned that every year through vocal in my school, they teach you a different component of performance, right? So grade nine is just get the notes right, sing the song correctly. Mm -hmm. And then grade 10 is kind of, okay, now use dynamics to emphasize the song. And then grade 11 is put emotion into the song. Mm -hmm. And then grade 12 is kind of putting that all together and show us that you're a better performer than you were in grade nine. Oh, um, I hope you're a better performer. Definitely. Than <laughs> Actually, speaking of... Um, performers or performance sing performance performances performing, performing. <laughs> I'm excited to see you perform live today because I am a huge fan of yours I have seen many of your YouTube videos and I'm not a stalker or anything I'm just a fan um, and so I'm really excited to see you perform live with us today I know my mom I told my mom you're on air she's like oh he's so good yeah he's performing live yeah. In fact, we should so why don't we do the ads yes and then we're going to uh, come back with a live performance. Mm -hmm. Sound, uh, so sound while good? we, while we do good, the yeah. ads, Jarius can go. Yeah, so up. you can go make, make your way over to the to the performance area. We're going to do the ads 
and uh, and then we're gonna make this thing happen. You have people. your headphones on still? Oh yeah, take those off. <laughs> those will go with you. Yeah. <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, today's episode of the sit down. Mm-hmm. is brought to you by the following fantastic advertisers. They make this show possible, everybody. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, let's thank them. And uh, hey, support them if you need their services. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The Toronto real estate market is growing and changing every day. Mm-hmm. In these challenging times, you need someone in your corner. Jeanette McKenzie, realtor at Forest Hill Signature, is committed to looking out for you. She'll go the extra mile to ensure you have all the information you need to make a decision you can feel confident about. Purchasing a home is one of the biggest financial investments you'll make in life. Don't leave it to chance. Call Jeanette McKenzie at Forest Hill Signature. She's my realtor. And she could be yours. That's right. The place I'm living in right now. She helped me find it. So uh, get in touch. Call today at 416-523-0408 or email at jmckenziehomes at gmail.com. Jewelry forever. Conveniently located at CF Markville Shopping Center on 5000 Highway 7 East Markham. They do custom-made jewelry, repairs, and change watch batteries all done on site. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jerry over at Jewelry Forever is an absolute artist. He specializes in custom-made items. If... uh, you have a vision for something beautiful you'd like made. He's the man to do it, but they also have a fine selection of already made things you can pick from. And we have a great deal worked out with them, don't we, Regine? We do. If you go into the store and let them know that Scott and Regine sent you, you'll get 15% off your entire purchase. That's right. 15% off. one five percent Mention the show. Tell them Scott and Regine sent you. Find out more at jewelryforever.ca. Mm-hmm. And uh, also follow them on TikTok because they have a lot of really cool posts on there. Mm-hmm. And uh, beautified by Romina. The official hair and makeup artist of the sit down. As we mentioned off the top of the show, we did do a photo shoot with her yesterday. She does everything from corporate, the sit down make hair and makeup. Uh, pageants, weddings, you name it. Concerts. So, I mean, if Jarius is ever looking for a makeup artist, just saying. Beautified by Romina. Check her out on Instagram and Facebook. And if you'd like to advertise on this show, it's simple. All you guys have to do is email us at radio show ad. That's radio show ad at gmail.com. You're looking for Scott. He's not going to do his part. But we are super excited because, hang on, give me two seconds. I can't do Scott's job. Oh, wrong camera. Lol. We are super excited because we have an amazing performer lined up for you. As you know, we talked about it earlier. He has an old soul and an amazing voice. And I'm really excited to see him live. So ladies and gentlemen, for the first time live on the sit down, give it up for Jarius Monzon. You're nobody till somebody loves you You're nobody till somebody cares You may be king and you may possess the world and its gold But gold won't bring you happiness when you're out growing old The world still is the same You'll never change it Just as sure as the stars shine above Well, you know, buddy, till somebody loves you So find yourself somebody to
saying you'll never change it Just as sure as the stars shine above Well you know but it till somebody loves you So find yourself somebody to love Thank you. Amazing. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was Jarius Monzon. And we are super thrilled to have him here. We are doing a live transition. Your camera. Huh? Your camera. Oh, oh, the cable. Um, yeah. You know, you can actually unplug. See that gray one? Um, it runs into a box there. You can just unplug it. <laughs> yes, yeah. please. Thank you. We're no longer using it. And we are back. We're back. Well, that was... Uh, that was amazing. Yeah, Can you well do it done. again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great, great performance. Great performance. So that was a little uh, a little taste. Mm-hmm. I mean, kind of. We're not getting exactly that. You got a little taste of who, who will be performing in this event yes. on February 11th. Mm-hmm. Um, you are going to be... Are you, how many songs are you singing in this one? Um, I'm singing in a variety of group songs, but I have one solo and a couple... I have one duet, but it's more of a dance number than it is a oh. uh, singing performance. That's it's awesome. Cool. Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, because it's interesting. The structure of the show, because I can't remember what, what qualifies something as a cabaret. I think a cabaret is that, where there's like a there's like a script, there's like a story, but then there's music that's from... Is that is that accurate? Do you know? Google it. I think so. I'm not really familiar with the word, though. Yeah, I can't remember what it's... Anyway, so but the way it's the show structures is that you've got this plot that's happening between these characters, right? Mm-hmm. And then... Oh, good. This, oh, the chat's been going. Oh. What's weird is we're not seeing it here. Why? Anyways, throwing the chats over really quickly. I don't mean to interrupt. Uh, yeah. You're getting a lot of love in the, the chats, by the way. Monzon Media is in here. He says his papa is his biggest fan. <laughs> um, and also said... Your hand is in my way. That's my boy as you're singing. Uh, Mila Monzon is in there giving lots of clap emojis and love. Yes. And also, sorry, we missed your comments earlier. Uh, 1411 experiment. What's up? I just hit 330 subs. Let's go. Congratulations. Well done. Keep it going. Keep it going. Mm -hmm. And Nightwolf, good morning. Sorry, Night. Sorry, people. We miss your chats. The chat's supposed to be here. And it's not. But I got you guys. But uh, thank you. But um, yeah, so the structure of this show is... You've got your general story that's mm-hmm. happening. And then throughout the song, throughout the show, there are also songs where the cast members and the chorus are singing songs mm-hmm. that have to do with the show. But then also kind of interspersed in between. There are mm-hmm. also just a variety of solo performances that kind of complement the show, but they're not exactly related to the actual plot. Got it. So it's kind of a different type thing. Yeah. But I'm excited. So, okay, so you sang, um, tell us a little bit about your performance, actually, that you just did. Oh, so I also picked this song solely because it's more relaxed. Mm -hmm. I could be a little bit more show-offy, but I needed to rest my voice a little from yesterday's performance because there was a lot of singing there. (laughs) Absolutely. But that song is something I've been wanting to sing for a while. And I don't know, it's just, it's... A song that I personally love, Mm -hmm. but I don't think I'd sing it at a concert solely because it's so relaxed. Have you ever done a solo concert? Um, I've done a, it was like a triple concert. Like it was like me and two other people Mm -hmm. and there was just focus on all three of us. Mm -hmm. I think it was like called like old school something. Mm -hmm. But that was like a long time ago, like 2020, I'd think. Mons on media, what are you doing? (laughs) Oh, Mike Brown says, great show, great voice. Amazing. Yeah. Um. You know what's funny? So we, little behind the scenes, so we had the music playing off of my device, my phone, Mm -hmm. just to make it easier for our setup. And so I put my phone on airplane mode Mm -hmm. so that obviously we don't want to get a call or an email or something in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. But I just heard my phone make a noise because I guess my, I had an an alarm set for something, a reminder, and that Mm -hmm. just buzzed. So it would have interfered the song. Imagine if we did it (laughs) later. But that just makes me think of something. You know what I've never liked? So obviously it's a huge, it's such a thing now. Like, so you, say you have your, your music plugged into like your car radio or like you're listening to it, right? Mm-hmm. And then 
obviously notifications come through and so it turns the music like it goes and you hear your you know you hear your yeah. sound one thing that bugs me i don't know if any of your phones do this but like even if i have my notification set to zero mm -hmm. and i'm listening to music when i get a notification the music volume still drops my phone's usually on silent so i normally don't get so your phone doesn't react anyway mm -hmm. Does yours do that? Do you know? Yeah, mine does that, like, especially when I'm in the car with friends. Mm -hmm. We're all, like, jamming out because we're all singers, and then suddenly just my friend just gets a text, and we're like, ah, oh, the mood just <laughs> dropped yeah. down. It just, it's a common thing. But the thing that bothers me is, like, even if I'm like, oh, I want to avoid that. Like, so, for example, now, I had to put my phone on airplane mode mm -hmm. so I don't get any notifications. But I should just be able to turn my notification noises to zero, and then when the notifications come through... The music should just be unaffected, but it's not. When the notification comes through, even if there's no sound, the music drops in volume as if there was a sound. Mine doesn't do that. Yours doesn't do that. Samsung problems. But anyways, going back to Jarius. <laughs> does yours phone, do you know if your phone does that or no? <laughs> um, I usually just go on Do Not Disturb, turn off the silencer, or yeah. uh, turn on the silencer, mm -hmm. and then just put it away. See? Do you have an iPhone? Yeah. See? Samsung problem. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, um, so you've been doing a lot of performances and oh. Oh, hey, Philip C just subscribed. Welcome to the channel, Philip. Appreciate it. Welcome. We're That's here it to with Phil. <laughs> Yes, we're here with Jarius Monzon mm -hmm. uh, talking about the upcoming Love Me Love Me Not Valentine musical. And actually, we should mention to people, um, tickets are available. Um, so if you want to get tickets, uh, there are links in the description below. I thought another no, 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 I heard no. that. Uh, another, uh, uh, you can either get them. There's regular price tickets, and there's also VIP tickets, which gets you some extra stuff. I think there's a phone number and an email in the description below if you want to get tickets. So, Friday, Saturday, mm -hmm. February 11th. 11th. And so, Jerry, so you are performing a lot lately. You're doing a lot of um, guests. Oh, wow, Hello. look at all these subscribers. Alma Garrido. Hi, Tita Alma. Um, so, you are doing a lot of guests. Um, special guest type performances. I know I asked you if you've ever done a solo. Would you ever do a solo concert? I think I would definitely do one and maybe kind of re-enkindle people's like love for old music. Mm -hmm. I think definitely like it's an opportunity to show off not only what I can do, but like what songs should be like or like what they were like back then. Because mm -hmm. nowadays when I'm turning on the radio, it's always just like pop songs, mm -hmm. rap songs. You never really hear those slow beats anymore, yeah. like any, like kind of just songs where you can close your eyes and like feel it, mm -hmm. yep. you know? I, can, I would go to that. And you know, I mean, uh, that's often how, how things, um, like everything that happens, right? Because you, you, we're fine, we're kind of in a circular thing, like we were going through the 60s thing, then we were going through a mm -hmm. 70s thing, and now everything is popular in the 80s is coming back, and now the 90s is coming back. But it's like, I find when everybody kind of gets used to a certain sound, they eventually start your ears start to get bored of it and so that's why i think there's almost like it, it'll create the atmosphere where somebody who comes in with something totally different yeah could actually oh wow that's cool mm -hmm. you know like do you remember uh like mumbo number five yeah right like that was kind of a moment where like there was that random time period <laughs> and whatever you whenever that was where like there the was 90s. like lou is it lou vega is that his name lou lou vega or lou vega no idea you know that song mumbo number five um, One, no. two, a little bit of oh, yeah. Yeah. In my life. yeah, definitely. Um, so at that time, there was like a few other random bands that were all like everybody was into that. Like the, like remember that? Is it Zoot Suit Riot? That song. <laughs> that one was not nearly as popular, but it came out around that time. There was just like suddenly this re revival of like really old school music. So, hey, you know what? Maybe you're the guy. But yeah, I think definitely with. Other than like solo things, I definitely love to perform with a live band mm. and sing a cappella with a couple people. Ooh. Like I think like something like pentatonics orientated yes. oh, yeah. would be so cool. Oh, and I've also that. always wanted to beatbox in a show. So yeah, because you're beatboxing yeah. off air. So what have you always been into beatboxing? I got into it around last year okay. because of COVID. So, mm -hmm. but I've always been like a big fan. And then there's this competition called GBB where it's the grand beatbox uh, championship it's like the best champions in the world they're all performing against each other wow and like when that started going on youtube i was like people actually do this this is cool and 
the guy I was rooting for got second place. His name's River,、mm. but he's from France. And I learned that like European countries are actually like the biggest, like top tier beatboxing countries in the world. Oh, oh wow! Interesting. I didn't know that. Can you, you beatbox a little bit? I mean, you make noises with your. I make noise. <laughs> I make noises, and like sometimes I'm on chat. But you know what happens is that when I'm doing my gaming streams, like while like I'm waiting on the loading screen, I'll just be like, <laughs> right, and then people in the chat will be like, "Whoa, you beatbox!" I'm like, I. <laughs> I mean, I just did, but I would say I wouldn't say that I'm somebody、I'm、who beat beatboxes. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing what some of those guys can do, though. Yeah, like when they make like those like like it sounds like it's rewinding, like whatever they do. Oh、it's、yeah, like, like scratch records and、yeah. stuff like that. I think right now beatboxing also goes to like genre trends,、mm. and the thing that's going on right now is something that many people in the past couldn't do. Like 2012, it was all like technique, really, like how fast could you go?、Mm-hmm. But nowadays, it's like. How low is your throw bass? Like how? Because people can make like really low noises now and do stuff on top of it.、Mm. Wow. Well, hey, that could be a, a a window for you then. Yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a oh, what is it? What's that instrument called? An oboe? Like、oh, a didgeridoo. Yeah, a didgeridoo. Yeah. I'm like, what is that thing called? <laughs> So when you get into your、um, acoustic or、uh, acapella group, you just get him to do that. <laughs> yeah, I'll be the didgeridoo. Yeah, that'd be fun. <laughs> That's all I can do, though. That's it. So you just bring me on for the didgeridoo solo. Exactly. <laughs>、um, oh, you know what we should have? We should have some. Oh,、um, well, I want. Now that you're done、anyway. singing. <laughs> yeah, exactly.、Um, are you familiar with Bertie Bott's Every Flavor Beans? Um, I remember looking at videos of them when I was a kid, like just Jelly Bellies in general. All right. Oh God. Well, so these I got these from the、uh, Harry Potter show.、Um, what's it called again? Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Cursed Child, and you saw it, right? I did. You did see it.、Um, anyways, so the way these are set up is.、Um, are some you of them... sure you want to do this? I mean, I've always wanted to try. It. <laughs> Boom! See, Regine.、Ooh. He's brave. I am not. He's a man of adventure. <laughs> Okay, so what we'll do is I will pour a bunch of them out. So some of them taste delicious, yeah. Or maybe depend. I mean, who's to say whether they taste good or bad? Some of them taste like more traditional flavors.、Mm. Some taste like things like vomit、Ooh. or sausage. Okay.、Oh. So the way we like to do it, <laughs> he's like sausage. That one doesn't sound that bad. Yeah. So there's not that many left. So、yeah. I'm not sure which are good, which are bad. So what I what I find I do is I'll reach out and I'll grab one. With my eyes closed, I won't eat it yet because we'll then look at the box to see if we can identify what it is,、mm-hmm. and then you have to eat it. All right. Okay. So. Hang so. on. Hang on. Hang on. I want to see something. I think all of those are gross. Okay. I'm gonna <laughs> grab one. I'm gonna grab one. You didn't even touch. It. Okay.、Oh. Okay. You want to grab one, Jarius? Okay. Oh. Okay.、Uh. All right. So, what does yours look like? Brown. Brown, Brown with, like, with little dark brown specks. Spots. It's either dirt. Okay. Or sausage. No, I think Scott's sausage. Or no. Ooh no, because this one is this one's brown with like white specks. Is there a brown one with white、mm-hmm. specks? So this one looks the most like sausage, and、mm-hmm. yours? Yours looks like dirt. Okay, it's kind of almost reddish. Kind of like dirt, right? I can deal with dirt. Could be dirt. <laughs> Ew! <laughs> All right, eat the dirt. Let's see. <laughs> Tell me if it tastes like dirt. Cheers, Scott. Why are you leaving? Why?、Well, I wanted to give him. Oh no, I wanted to let, experience it. You know what? I'm pretty sure it's dirt, but it's not that bad. <laughs> does it actually kind of taste like dirt a little bit? Yeah. How would you know what dirt tastes like? <laughs> <laughs> I think because、um, I used to do a lot of sports when I was younger,、oh. like soccer, volleyball, all that stuff. Frisbee Face- is definitely one.、Oh. Face plant right into the grass. Yeah, into the grass.、Oh, I can taste like little hints of grass. Ew. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> okay, and what do we think this one was? Sausage.、Yeah. I think so. You've already had sausage, no? Yeah, but half of it. Oh, never mind. <laughs> oh yeah, sausage. Instantly, it's weird how much it tastes like it. Yeah, it's actually good. Like I like the taste. Yeah, of see, this is why you should have one. No. Do I do one more? Kind of. Go ahead. <laughs>、right. Do it. Oh, okay. Because、eh, I can't see. Okay. Oh、Red. God. Does it have any spots on it? Uh, like little black specks. Ooh, it's earthworm.、Ooh. So dirt and worms. And <laughs> Now, if I recall, <laughs> earthworm, I didn't like it at all. Hang on, let me pick mine. Okay. Oh God. Okay, Scott, you touched. See, look, there's two、them. left for you. No, thank you. You're on your own. <laughs> okay, what do I get? It's, it's like a, a very it's、like、light、toothpaste. blue. Or soap. Soap. Oh, soap. Okay, you go first. So、okay. you, we think it's earthworm. No. Oh God. I recall not liking that one. At least he has one. Yeah, that's definitely worm. Ugh. It's like dirty worms. Ew. Well, like matches. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Is it gross? 
Do you like Not it? Not really. I mean, it's okay. I've had worse things like broccoli. I'll, I'll also say... <laughs> you don't like broccoli? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll also say that every single one of them, they st there's still a little element of sweetness. Like yeah. There's still a bit of candy flavor to it. Like, it's not like it's just worms. Yeah. <sighs> All right, so I think, so we think this is soap? Mm hmm Okay. <laughs> it's kind of sweet, like it's a sweet flavor soap. There's definitely a soapy element to it. Would you say it's more Dove or like Pantene? <laughs> Pantene. Mm. Definitely more oh. Pantene palette. You know what it does? You know what it tastes like? It tastes like when you when you smell a soap mm. that you think is going to taste good, but then you bite it and it doesn't taste good. But mm. why would you yeah. bite your but, soap? Because it smells so good. Because it smells good. But this tastes like Am what I you hope. You? This tastes like what you hope it would taste like. Oh. You know what I mean? Like it no. tastes like it's like, oh, I bet you, like, you, you ever have like, I've had like, you know, chocolate or like shortbread flavored, like, um, say face wash or something or like a uh, hand lotion. Like, oh, that smells so good. Ew, you I, eat. <laughs> well, I, I, maybe I've like, you know. What's wrong with you? <laughs> you just think it's going to yeah. taste as good as it smells. I know what he means. <laughs> This this tastes pretty good. You know what? There's only two left. We might as well finish yeah. the box. Okay, so hang on. We should swirl it around mm -hmm. so that we don't know which is getting which. Okay. It didn't even. You, you go first. You go okay, first. I'll just. Uh, eh. Okay. 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 And I'm guess I'm getting this one. Okay, okay so, so Jarius, one isn't the Jarius vomit one. got green apple and oh, Scott apple? got black pepper. Is this the oh. vomit one? No, green pep. Uh, green apple. Okay. Oh. Here, let's let's cheers these. We can. Okay. I think. Cheers. Cheers. I don't see vomit on here. Mmm. Is it apple? That's the sweet one. Yeah. There you go. Yours is black pepper. pepper. You got sausage and pepper. You know what? Pepper, <laughs> this isn't bad either because there's like a sweetness and also a uh, just like a little pepperiness. It's not mm. bad. I like mine. <laughs> he ends on a good it's note. Like, it's like nature, you know? It's apples, worms, and dirt. There you go. Dirt. There you go. And aren't there so usually the worms in the apple? Yeah. In the yeah. Egg? yeah. There you go. Yeah, so you put the soil on the ground. Uh-huh. And then the earthworms, they... They, they, they till it. the soil uh -huh. mm. and it grows out a beautiful fruit. I think that would be like a good cake idea, like different layers. Ew. Yeah, like, <laughs> like not like actual worms and dirt, but like, you know, like chocolate, yeah. mm. fondant. Actually, I went to a kid's birthday party where they did something like that. They had like um, a brown pudding. Mm. Oh, it's like the, um, I know what you're talking about. They have gummy worms. and Yeah, gummy worms, brown yeah. pudding, and then uh, crushed Oreos. Yeah, yeah I, I had that. That's awesome. Yeah. We experienced it. Hey, you know what? And we finished the box. Oh my Congrats. god, it only took us a month. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. You got to experience the end of the Birdie Bots Every Flavor Beans. Mm -hmm. Mila Monzon is laughing at the both of you in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey. hey, we got a meal, Regine. It's delicious. It you got your nutrients. Yeah. The only ones that I had that I found really that I did not like, rotten egg. Oh. And um, I don't know if I ever actually got vomit. I don't know if I ever had it. Ew. But I remember not liking rotten egg, and I remember... I remember Earthworm, it wasn't as bad, but it was it was one of the ones where I'm like, okay, there's a bitterness in here that I'm not liking. I mean, Jarius ate it like a champ. Yeah. It, was, it was okay. It was all right. You know what? You deserve the green apple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Went out, we finished strong there. We finished yeah. Strong. Mm -hmm. um, okay, well, we're almost at the hour. Maybe we should do this. We won't yeah. necessarily wrap up immediately if we come up with another thing to chat about, mm -hmm. but we should get this going. Yeah. So um, are you familiar with this? Scarily, yeah. Why right. scarily? Because I remember, I think we did it at a birthday party. Oh, yeah. And Chelsea's. I was like, oh, man. Chelsea that's right. Won, right? That's right. Mika's yeah, we, birthday. That's right. It was at yeah, Mika's birthday party. Jennifer asked me to host a live thing. And Chelsea actually got... All of them, I think you said? Yeah, she was really good. She, yeah, she won. I can't, I can't remember if she got... I know that she got more than my high score. I can't remember if she got more than... Um, James. James, yeah. Cause so James Nickel, like I told you, show, show, earlier. just start it, just start. Yeah, it. okay, okay, yeah, let's. Yeah. We, we might as well. Okay, so everybody, um, introducing this week's edition of the Barrel of Monkeys World Championship. Bum, ba, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> Love that little monkey. Love it. Okay, so yeah, James Nickel was on. So for the longest time, I had the high score of nine monkeys. She did. Okay. Um, allegedly, Regine. Allegedly. Huh. Um, but now, if we go to the standings here, you can see that now, sitting at the top, mm -hmm. is James Nickel 
with 10 monkeys. Second place, Scott Dion Brown, nine monkeys. And then we've got four people, three, one, two, three, four people sitting in third place. Regina Lena, Anna Goldsmith, who was on last week, had a really good run. She got to eight. Mm-hmm. Leticia from Team Canada Galaxy, eight. Mika JDL Cupid Archo, as of course we know Mika, she will see here on Saturday as well, mm-hmm. eight. And Alona Fiondaka, eight monkeys. And I'm not going to read all the others. The, li- the list is just getting longer <laughs> and longer. But, Sorry, if you don't make it past eight, he ain't going to read your name. Yeah, you know, top three people, come on. Okay, so the rules are, I'll hand you the barrel. Mm-hmm. You'll sit it on the table. Lid remains on. I will put a one-minute timer on the clock. I'll say three, two, one, go. You grab the barrel. You open the barrel. You pour them out. You grab a monkey. You use this monkey to pick up another monkey, another monkey to pick up another monkey. And you're trying to, you know, get as many mon- as many monkeys on here as you can. And uh, if you end up with two monkeys on the same monkey, so uh, like this, right? Mm-hmm. That will count as one monkey. Yeah. So what we're counting are the length, the lengths of monkeys. He's done this before. Yeah. So you will have one minute on the timer. When the timer runs out, obviously hold it there so that we have time to count them all. And uh, do you have any questions? No. <laughs> all right. So I will. I will hand you this. Do I just move them? Yeah, you can move. Oh yeah. Uh, can if anything, move. yeah, move. Yeah, wherever you feel comfortable pouring them. So I guess right there. Okay. So, let me get the timer ready here. ASMR. ASMR. <laughs> okay, uh, timer. There we go. Dun, dun, dun. One minute on the clock. Okay, so yeah, have it on the, on the table. Yeah. No cheating. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. <laughs> this is it. Barrel of Monkeys World Championship this week's edition. Three, two, two one. Bing! Go! Ooh. All right. Rough start. Oh, Let's see if he can. Oh, there oh. you go. There you go. Restart. Oh, there restart. you go. Oh, okay. 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 Okay, Jarius. Ooh. He's right. done this before. We've got some. We've got some we got some interesting... We're going to have to make some interesting calls there, Regine, because I can see one hook not Stop. traditionally, but... You got this, Jarius. Because, like, that one little guy hanging in the middle, he's he's yeah. hooked around the guy's neck, but I think that would still count. I think it counts. Just don't lose it. Oh! I mean, you can use the feet. Oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you got this. 22 seconds. 20 seconds remaining now. Yep. Yeah, this one's hard to get. Maybe... I'm not helping. Just kidding. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There's I, I an opening. I see something. Yeah. You see? Oh. oh. You're almost. No. No. You're good. You're good. Keep. Don't panic. You just don't want to spill. Right? Yeah. You got this. Time. Game. Ooh, I just dropped one. Oh. Okay. So you let's dropped count. one. Yeah. We oh. lost one at the end. Okay. Let's count. Let's count. Let's count. So. Um, we have. One. One. Two. two that's got to count. Yeah, Three, that four, five. five monkeys. So we had six. We lost one. Yeah. Damn. But you know what? You had some challenges there. You had some challenges in the beginning. Um, so five, Regine, right? Mm-hmm. Five. Okay, so let's update the standings. Let's update these monkey standings. Good job, Jarius. Thank you. So uh, overall, how are you uh, How are you feeling about your performance there? I thought I was going to get three. So, so it was like double what? the amount. There you go. Jarius Monzon. Monkeys. Five monkeys. And I do have to reorganize how the, like, look, look at, look at, now the standings are, how come that person's? We'll organize it for the next episode. But, uh, does somebody's letters get cut off? I think we're missing. Anyway, well, or, yeah, I, I got to make this look better. But anyway, Jarius now sitting there in, uh, in, uh, oops, oopsie, oopsie. Okay, where are where is he? Five monkeys. There he is. <laughs> what what place is that? One, two, three, four, five, sixth place. Good enough. <laughs> and you know what? You know what, Jarius? You are you are there with some good company. You're sitting there with a uh, very talented singer, Jalen Bradley. Mm-hmm. Five monkeys, and uh, and Valentina Sitchko, 
who's also a singer and 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 and, and there you go so the, th the three of you rounding out um what place was it fifth place uh, six i think your dad said you should change your list to top, top 10, ten plus ties yeah maybe well, we've definitely got it because those numbers are getting really small they're getting really small we'll figure something out for next time but everybody mm -hmm. this concludes this week's edition of the barrel of monkeys world championship oh oops i started the uh, music again by accident The uh, barrel of monkeys. I mean, you never know where you it's were so go. close. You had six, and then yeah, I yeah. think a lot of the monkeys were like on top of each other weirdly, so yeah. I couldn't get the rest of them. Well, I was gonna say if you were able to hook it because it was on the cord. I was like, if you're able to just hook it, there was already two attached to each other. Mm. Yeah. Well, because right and also right off the top, two grabbed on that were hanging in a weird way. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, I didn't think that was gonna work, so I let it go. Yeah. It's all yeah. about the pour, I think. Because you, you had difference. it where it was just like on top of each other. Oh, that's actually a really good. <laughs> Regine wants to. Uh, Regine wants to try. I want to redeem my myself. Well, one, one day. Look, that was such a good pour. I grabbed it all, all in one, one hand. hand. <laughs> that's true. Like it almost like now you're thinking to yourself. Oh, if I had to do it again, maybe like what I, maybe I'll pour really slowly, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll try to control how they come out. But because you are now on the board, you will be back. So you yeah. will have another chance. Yeah, we want to have you back. Eventually, we're going to do a one episode where it's just it's just the Barrel of Monkeys Championship, <laughs> and that's all we do. So I think that would be so cool. Yeah. And uh, we'll probably introduce some different rules. Mm -hmm. For example, like this thing where you um, you only count links of monkeys. I'm thinking of eliminating that rule. Ooh. So if you can get five monkeys on one monkey, like whatever, just get whatever you can get. Mm -hmm. I'd be curious to see if that's something that we should do. We should try it between ourselves we'll first. To see. <laughs> yeah. Also, I wouldn't mind like getting a few barrels and introduce so it's like a larger. We're just pile. waiting for them to go on sale. <laughs> yeah. We're watching for that barrel of monkeys sale. Come on, get it together. Uh, Hasbro. 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 All right. T times are tough. We can't be buying full price monkeys. Sponsor us. No <laughs> or you know, do it. Or we get the tournament sponsored by Hasbro. By people. Or by somebody. Maybe that's better. Jewelry forever. I'm looking at. <laughs> Winner gets like diamond encrusted monkeys. Ooh. Mm, I like monkey cufflinks. Yeah, monkey cufflinks, yeah. <laughs> now I'm just making random stuff up. Yeah. Don't hold me accountable for any of this, guys. <laughs> um, so, Jarius, you are not only performing next week, but you also have another performance lined up. Is that correct? Um, Yeah. If it's okay, I'll pull out the information for you. Yeah, it. of course. Do it. I'll give him a quick shout out. He's prepared. So, yeah. On. Other than the February 11th Love Me Love Me Not concert, I have the March 18th at Toronto Pavilion, the Reminiscent 2.0 show, mm. which is basically just two of the greatest OPM singers in the 90s and 20s, or 20,000s. <laughs> oh uh, my god, don't Joey say it like G that. and Jinky Vital. Ooh. So they're going to sing timeless classics such as Forevermore, So Slow. This one's in Filipino, but we're going to we're going to try it. Do it. Bakit Nayon Kalan. I love that yeah. song. Perfect pronunciation, right? Really? <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so if you want uh, tickets, you can email us at mcbngroup mm -hmm. at gmail.com or call us at 905-781-6165. Sweet. And you are, what are you doing there? Um, I am going to be performing a solo piece. Nice. Are awesome. you singing Tagalog or? Uh, no. <laughs> I think one day I eventually will sing Tagalog, mm -hmm. but we'll see. Maybe I'll I'll come up with something on that show Ooh. as a surprise. <laughs> There's still is time. Is it a surprise? <laughs> <laughs> but I I also wanted to say thank you to Mr. Von Canton for giving me this opportunity and letting me perform at the show mm -hmm. for just more like just have fun. We like Von. Sweet. Yeah. Shout yeah. outs to Von. Yeah. He's a good guy, and he's uh, he's he puts on a lot of things. He's doing amazing work with the Filipino community here, and not just Toronto, but so the Vaughn um, extravaganza that we were a part of a couple years ago. They did a touring version, right? They're doing a lot all across Canada now. So. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm Country pretty sure they're going wide. to BC, if I'm not mistaken, or Edmonton. How cool. BC or Alberta, one of the two. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. 
Well, uh, where can uh, people find you, Jarius? If so, uh, people want to, yeah, find you on social media and all that. Thank you to Scott Dion Brown at <laughs> so because you can find me at Jarius Jam on Instagram mm-hmm. and on like other platforms like YouTube and Facebook. You can find me on Jarius Monzon, and yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you want to plug in Monzon Media? Oh yeah, and my mm-hmm. dad also has a tutorial, a YouTube channel for any you know like Photoshop, Luminar. Like kind of just stuff like that. If you are looking for tutorials for that kind of stuff, hit up Monzon Media on YouTube. He has a bunch of different tutorials for photo editing and products, and especially、um, AI art, which is、oh. a new thing that's、oh. coming up. Is this where you're getting your,、um, I guess, your inspiration for being in film and photography? Is it your dad? Yeah, he's、uh. he's been doing a lot of things with like editing and. Photography. I learn all my stuff from him.、Mm-hmm. So the fact, like, I get really good marks for photography and film. Like, I got an award the、um, last semester、mm-hmm. for the highest mark in photography at the school. Whoa! Sweet. I got、awesome. a ninety. An art school. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Sorry, I cut you off. But yeah, I had ninety-eight for that at、uh, that course. But it's kind of. I feel like it's a little cheating because I have someone to teach me at home, <laughs> but I also put in the work because I have an interest at at it outside of school.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. So all my photos and stuff are taken at like different places, like Rotary Park or stuff like that. That's cool. It's not cheating. It's <laughs> you have extra resources. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you know, it's no different than some kids go play sports after school or go to ballet lessons or go、mm-hmm. to piano lessons. You just hang out with your dad. Yeah. See.、Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, get photography lessons. No different. Yeah, that's, that's so cool. cool. That's very cool.、Mm-hmm. How do you find the difference between photography and like videography? Definitely, there's a lot of similar elements, but I realize that they're both completely different because, like, for example, with photography, it's very like I find it's very patient, very calming.、Mm-hmm. Like you can just take photos of the same thing every so now and often. But like, say it's like a car. That's a totally different story, but with videography, it's like we're on a time crunch. Like、mm-hmm. with all the films I've made, we've only recorded in like a single day,、mm-hmm. and we only have five hours till it gets dark.、Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like scary. Yeah, interesting. I remember one time,、um, years and years ago, we we wanted to do like a music video with my band,、mm-hmm. and、uh, I wanted to get somebody to film it for us.、Mm-hmm. And at the time.、Um, I, I, we knew this girl who was a a. She did a lot of photography, but she never did videography. And it was funny watching photography. her photography, <laughs> pho, photography, photo, photography, photography.、Um, but she had no experience doing video work. And what the thing that I noticed afterwards when I watched the footage is, I was like, she was, she found some really great angles. Yeah. But she hadn't given any thought to like the space between going from this angle. To this angle, right? Because in video, like, we're work, you're seeing all of it.、Mm. But so, I a lot of the video was like, oh, that looks really good, and then suddenly the camera would be like all over the place. Oh and no! She comes over here, and I was like, oh yeah, you gotta. It's one of the big differences. Gotta keep it steady. Yeah, yeah, just a different. Yeah, they're like related, but they're related but very different. One、yeah. still shot, one's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they like the cameras, like the cameras, the way you use the cameras are slightly different. You got to think more about. I mean, you use a videography camera for a photo shoot yesterday. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. A well, cinematic camera. Yeah, I use my because I, I have a, a cinema camera, but but it's got a really good.、Um, you flip it over and it goes to photo mode. It takes really nice pictures.、Mm. The Sigma FP. It's my camera. So,、uh, any final thoughts from anybody before we wrap things up?、Um, I just wanted to thank you guys for inviting me on the show. I had a great time. Yeah, it's it's yeah, great. It yeah, it's great getting to finally meet you. I know Scott's met you in in person already. It's great to meet you in person and to continue seeing your growth. Because、um, the last time you were on, you just won Wakopa, and then now here you are, back to back to back to back. Yeah,、so、it's great. Yeah, it's uh yeah, this was a fun episode. Thank you for being here.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, yeah, it's been great watching you go on this musical journey. And、uh, we wish you all the best. <laughs> you too, you too. I can't wait for your solo concert. But for one more、there. thing, yes.、Yep. As we end the show, can we do the mug thing? Because that's like my favorite thing. What's when the you, mug? When thing? you pull it、oh, under the camera,、yeah. you、I'm、pull、down. it away. Okay, yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it. Okay, let we'll let Jarius do. We'll、it. let you do it because we're gonna have one camera on at a time. Well, so okay, you'll、okay. end the show. Oh wait, we you know what we should do though. First is、uh, Regine. Where can people <laughs> find you? <laughs> 
you guys can find me on my youtube channel which is in the description below um we go live every other week for the pageant sit down we just had episode 100 congratulations by the way thank you um so make sure you check it out you can also follow me on instagram and tiktok at it's regina lena <laughs> scott yeah <laughs> i was like i don't want to ask you uh where can people find you you can find me right here where you're watching this very video youtube.com slash scott dion brown mm -hmm. um you get on here you get the sit down all right, mm -hmm. we got we got music videos. Mm -hmm. Really excited about the next music video coming out on the channel very soon. Mm -hmm. I shot it on Friday, mm -hmm. all day. It looks it took. so cool. Well, I didn't see it, but I've seen. You've seen? She's seen it the, the, so the, cool. the the bits, the pieces. Whatever I was allowed to see. <laughs> yeah, there's makeup involved. There are props. It, it, it's it was a lot of work. So I'm excited to edit the thing and get it out. So make sure you're subscribed for that. Makeup not sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> Not that one, no. That one was all me. Then, no. well, you'll see. You it. did a good job. It looks like I was happy. We'll see how it looks. Anyway, you guys will see. Watch. So make sure, yeah, youtube.com slash Scott You get the music, you get the gaming. Um, I've announced the uh, date of our Brawlhalla 1v1 All Star Tournament, mm -hmm. February 25th. So if you have won a 1v1 tournament in the past, you are qualified to enter this tournament. So sign yourself up in my Discord server. Jarius is going to go back to gaming because of you. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get in that Brawlhalla. Yeah. Um, so yeah, YouTube.com. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you want. Um, but honestly, YouTube is the best place. That's where everything is. All the other accounts work as a, as a satellite for mm -hmm. the YouTube channel. Um, also, you can follow us on the show on uh the sit down with sdb on tiktok the sit down with sdb on instagram sit down, or sit down scott. scott on twitter twitter uh follow us and uh yeah and thank you everyone for tuning in loving all the comments monzon media says thanks guys appreciate you guys you having jarius you're welcome welcome and mila monzon thank you scott and regine you're very welcome Mm -hmm. um thank you guys for tuning in make sure you hit that little like button Boop, bing. the little like button there mm -hmm. on the video and uh people we'll see you all next time uh jarius i'll let you uh close out the show okay, take it away thank you for sitting with the sit down with scott <laughs> dion brown bye <laughs>